Hey guys, it's Cindy from the Yoga Shack in Bethpage, Long Island. Uh, today is Tuesday tutorial and we are going to learn how to crow pose. It's a really fun pose. A lot of people are super intimidated to try. Uh, I won't get super technical and I hope you guys will try it. So grab your mat. If you have a block, you can grab a block. Some people feel more comfortable with a block under your head so that you can eliminate the fear of falling and smashing your face. Um, and that's it. All right, get your stuff and get started. The first thing we're gonna do is kind of start in like this squat stance. Okay, it's like a nice way to start. Um, I'm just gonna start you. You can start in lots of different places. So just bring your elbows to the inside of your knees and just spread them apart. Bring your hands together and just say a little prayer that you're not gonna fall on your face. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. All right, but bring your hands together and just close your eyes, take a few deep breaths. It's always nice to get centered before your practice. And then we're gonna start with our hands. So I want you to think of any time you're in a posture, whether you're standing or um, whether you're using your hands, that whatever is touching the floor is your sense of feeling grounded. Right? That's like your root. Think of like the root of a tree. So I want you to think of, of that as like your root. Okay, so like feel your roots of your hands kind of um, pulling down or the earth pulling you down. Right? So it's really important that you have a good solid foundation with your hands. So there's, there's the same cueing that you'll hear all teachers say in lots of different ways though. We spread our fingers really wide. Energetically, we wanna spread them really wide. And then we wanna press through our finger pads. So what happens is when we press through our finger pads, you'll see like your knuckles kind of slightly lift. So I'm gonna spread my fingers really wide and my knuckles are gonna lift. Now, before I actually go into it, I wanna to explain to you. So if you have nice, dainty little arms, right? And you don't have a lot of muscle. When you put your knee into your tricep, right? Into the back of your arm, it's gonna hurt. So a lot of times people try crow pose and as soon as they get their knees into the arms, they're like, oh my God, ow, that hurts, which I understand. So I like to work on engaging these muscles first. I think that, um, I mean, if you're like an advanced practicing yogi, you know how to move into it, but I'm talking to you, who's obviously somebody who's new at this. So I think it's important that you practice engaging the back of your arms before you even come into the pose. So meaning like as you push down, squeeze the back of your arms, almost like if you were lifting weights and if you lifted a weight, right, what happens? Our muscles contract and you could feel it, it tightens up. So I want you to practice squeezing and tightening those muscles. Just release, squeeze and tighten, release, squeeze and tighten. Just practice that a few times so that when you come into this and you're already challenged, you have that part down, okay? So spread your fingers wide, press through your finger pads, okay? Your hands should be just about shoulder distance. And now we wanna bring our knees as high up into your armpits as you can. That's pretty challenging. So I like to say to start for your first one, Bring your knees sort of to the outside of your arms, not all the way to the outside, but it's sort of like, I don't know how to explain this, but like semi to the outside. So it's like sort of, you're, you're still to the back of the arm, but a little bit on the side, okay? And then as high as you can get them. Now, you're gonna squeeze those upper arms, like I said, and I want you to start to squeeze your knees into the arms. Now, here's where people start to panic, right? Because you're afraid of lifting your feet. So keep rooting down through those fingertips. Look forward and up. If you're looking down, you're gonna go down, right? So look forward and up, shift the weight forward. If you have a block, you could put it under your head and then just practice maybe lifting one foot and lowering it down, lifting the foot, lowering it down, right? But again, make sure you're looking forward and up, squeeze those knees into the arm and then maybe, one foot and then the other foot. Now, if you feel like you're losing your balance, most likely you'll go back like I did or you'll fall forward, but don't worry, in 20 years of teaching, honestly, I've never called 911, so you're good. 
All right, now, after you practice that a few times, then you can go into trying to get your knees more to the back of your arms as high up as you can. So again, squeezing in, shifting the weight forward, and then work to lift your feet. Keep pressing through those finger pads. Gaze forward and up. And then you can lower it down. Now, if you're super strong and you've got the balance aspect, you could also work on jump back. So if you wanna work into your, your upper arms and, and give them a nice sculpt, this is actually cool to practice too. So again, shift the weight forward, work to lift your feet, and then squeeze and then press back. Uh, shoot those legs back, okay? So if you're familiar with a chaturanga, if you're familiar with a chaturanga, um, you would just shoot those legs right back. If you're not familiar with that low push-up, you definitely should practice that first. Don't just jump back because you don't want to hurt your back or your, or your shoulders, okay? Your shoulders are one of the most susceptible joints for injuries, so be super careful with that. But basically your chaturanga would be here right, your plank, you shift the weight forward a little bit, right, just like slightly, and then bend your elbows, lower the chest, lower the hips, so everything should be in one line. Keep those upper arms squeezing in. Again, press through those finger pads, all right? So that's your chaturanga. Oh my God, I'm so out of breath. So that's pretty challenging in itself. So you might want to practice that again first before you just start shooting your legs back. All right. And let us know how it goes. All right. Peace out.